We're back in the shop right now. I want to give you a little update on what I'm working on. Have a look at this. So this is a desk that's upside down. I'm just putting the frame together on it. And it was glued last night. I'm sure it's fine now. When you flip it over, we'll be putting legs on this. The blank for the desktop has been cut out in the shape of a U. That's what Gavin wants. Colton wants one that was in the shape of an L. So I have yet to put the under frame on it and then I'll put legs on it. Over here, this is a closet organizer that I built for uh, the new room bedroom downstairs storage space for all your clothes in the middle and on the sides there's going to be two racks that attach to the wall and there's going to be another rack that attaches on this side to hang your clothes on and then there'll be a small space underneath here you guys will see that coming up i've been working in here i'd like to say it's because of the cold weather but i just have to get them off uh the list of things to do all of these things were made out of just two two sheets of plywood so Doing the math to make sure it all works out was key in order to getting this all done. But I didn't want to have overages and I wanted to make sure I had enough in order to make all of the certain things that I'm trying to build here at once with just two sheets of plywood. All together to build two desks and this closet organizer. I'm in for materials about $215. Estimates are around $800 to $1,100 to replace all that furniture if I just went out to a store and bought it today. So I would much prefer building the kids what they want as opposed to buying what I can get. But that's just me. I don't know. And I'm practicing skills. This is, this is one of those things where if you want to have more in life without having to make more money, because it seems like it, it is really hard to make more money. So it's really easy to learn new skills if you're willing to put the time and effort into it. So if you could exchange $800 or $1,000 of your time for the skills to make the stuff that you have to pay a fraction of the price for, that is the trade-off for what you're doing and what we're trying to achieve. That is how I have all the things that I have, is that in, in not having the money to just go out and buy something brand new to replace it with, I developed the skills over many years to try and learn new things and practice and just be adventurous. Go make it and get the tools that help you make it. Research what they are. Find a friend, find someone. Turns out I haven't made any cabinets uh, myself and I helped someone about 20 years ago built with building cabinets. I've never actually done it myself so this little project here with all these three desks, these two desks and this uh, closet organizer are the run up for me building my own cabinetry for the burn dough and, and in the house. So built-ins and all that stuff. I'm just practicing. Master carpenter that I used to rent from told me that master carpenters are just experts at hiding their mistakes. So that's what we're working on is trying not to make mistakes. But if we do, we learn how to hide them so that it looks Amazing. So today's a bit de dedicated to the burn dough. I ran it out of lumber yesterday. So we're gonna hop in the truck, it's warming up over here, and we're gonna go get ourselves some new lumber, drive it down, and hopefully put up the rest of the strapping today. It's the middle of January in Canada, and I've got no snow. It's uh, hovering right around zero right now for us on the East Coast. And it's been disappointing. I bought a snowmobile in the summer and I think that's the reason that we've got no snow this year. <laughs> Howdy. It's like the strapping, foreign strapping. Yep. Uh, bottom of the green rocking unit. Very, thank you. Yep. We need 12 footers and 8 footers, need about 31 boards all together. Crap. God, I hope they have 8 footers. Oh, they do. 
God help the 12 footers. Oh, they do. We're good. So strapping is not exactly a hard job. You can make it as complicated as you want. All I do is I use a level and where I can't use a level on the ceilings I use a measuring tape in order to get my spacing and I pick a spot to measure from and choose my spacing. And it's that simple. Once your first string's on, your second string starts off your last string and then you make your measurements for the last one. But when you're doing the gamble ends, there's two different angles that you have to be concerned about. So I made end jigs that you can see here. They have two different cut angles on them. This angle is the angle of the roof that as it goes from the floor to the uh, corner. And then the rest of the upper part of the roof is this angle. So we're gonna be able to use these to start our pieces into the corners and then take our measurements out from there. And all I am gonna do is use a pencil to mark where I wanna go, cut it off, nail it up and go. We're gonna do them one foot apart, just like everything else that's put up here. And once that's done, we have another problem that we have to deal with. But make your life easy instead of making every angle individually, make a template. So this particular problem here with all of these plates is something I'll have to address next after I get the rest of the strapping on. I have an idea of what I'm gonna do, but I haven't decided. If you look down them, you'll see maybe that at least one, if not two, are out of size and dimension. So we're gonna be addressing that. And then we'll be putting something on there to catch the paneling that's gonna go over top of it. Or I may do something else altogether that isn't covered off yet, but I, I'm still coming up with ideas. I have an idea with what this space could be um, in the future, just to divide the room up a little bit. And it may would make it easier for me to put the paneling on if I had a separate feature here where these braces are for the roof. So I don't know, we'll see what I come up with. This right here is where the wires are going to come up for the 110 and the monitor. And over there is the same thing. It's going to come up. Believe it or not, the floor downstairs is overlapped by that top sill by this much. So this is the closest I could get it. If I went and drilled down through here, I'd be drilling right in the middle of that top, or right in the top edge of that plate, and it would go nowhere except for into foam. So there was nothing that I could do about that. I thought they may meet closer, if not here, and then I would just cut it a notch in here, but uh, clearly that's not the case. If I was gonna do something more in depth or more demanding for power, I would do something other than this, and I would put in conduit and all that stuff, but. The way that my calculations work out, there's not going to be a whole lot of uh, draw and that's all going to be covered up with cabinetry in the end. So there'll be no way of accessing it. There'll be flooring there, cabinetry there, and everything that goes with that, all, all those good things. So no worries. I know that I would uh, cause a little bit of a conundrum in my comments section for running 
wires horizontally through a section of floor that's doubled up, tripled up, and all that stuff. It's gonna be completely covered, concealed, and it's gonna be for me to remember where it's at because it's running off the inverter. It's not gonna have a big draw, and if anything happens, it'll snap that uh, fuse that's in that line, so. Okay, moving on. There you have it, folks. All of the strapping is done. And I have to figure out a solution for this particular problem here yet, but strapping aspect is finished, which is great. So now we're off to electrical and we can start putting up paneling and there's gonna be an interior wall put in right here where I'm standing. That's gonna section off an area for a washroom. So you see the cuts you get made when you have the jig? I didn't have to spend all day making these cuts. It makes it real easy. Take a level, set it on top of the board that you're trying to put on. When it's level, shoot the board on and move on. Everything's spaced a foot apart all around the building. And now we're off to finish it up. It's so cool. It's, it's such a difference in here, even with just the strapping on. I can't wait to get everything put on. Over here in this corner is where the little kitchenette's gonna be. And that's why I'm practicing with all the cabinetry that you saw earlier. As you can see today, it is cloudy and it's even snowing. But if you come in here in the dark with me, and have a look. The solar panel is actually generating 20.9 volts still. So we're still charging. And even though it's snowing out, oh, there we go. Batteries are at 100%, despite the fact that I've had the radio on and the lights on all day. So I've got snow and I've got 100% power. Whenever you consider whether or not you're putting lights in, I would recommend if you can go with a full 12 volt system for your lighting, that's the way to do it. You can put dimmers on and stuff like that, 12 volt dimmers, but the 12 volt lighting is one of the biggest aspects of changing from 110 to 12. The solar panels, let's go out here, we'll have a look. I didn't hit my head, that's pretty good. They're exposed, but they're not really getting any sun. It's a pretty pale day. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and make a comment on that other video that I did before so that you could win your own battery monitor for your own system for free. I'm going to send it to you for absolutely free. All you got to do is send me your address once I contact you. Peace.